Welcome back or welcome maybe to your first session of our symposium this year. We are so excited to have you with us. In this session particularly, we are going to talk about Procreate is a Digital Sketchbook. But before we get to that, I just want to tell you a little bit about myself and about the symposium in general. So my name is Jesse Katz Greenberg. I'm the artist community manager here at Spoonflower. I'm really excited that we were able to partner with Craft Industry Alliance once again on this event to bring you a full day or two days of um, informational workshops and panels that can help you grow your surface design business. Um, if you are brand new to Spoonflower, uh, Spoonflower is a print-on-demand platform and manufacturer of wallpaper, fabric, and home decor. Our online global marketplace connects makers, consumer, makers and consumers with independent artists all over the world who earn royalties every time their designs are purchased. Any artist can set up shop at spoonflower.com now to start growing their surface design business. And I did this in the last session. I'm going to do it again here as well. Let us know in chat if you already have a Spoonflower shop. Mm -hmm. Love to know how many of our current Spoonflower artists are here in the audience. Awesome. Um, and as I mentioned, the Surface Design Symposium is presented in partnership with Craft Industry Alliance. Craft Industry Alliance is a community for creative professionals. Get expert trainings like those that you see here today, plus become a part of a vibrant creative community for advice and support. Craft Industry Alliance has a special coupon code to share with you today for participants in today's symposium, you can use the code SURFACEDESIGN2023 at craftindustryalliance.org to get 20% off of your membership through October 13th. And I'll be sure to share that information in the chat as well. So some quick housekeeping before we begin. We have... Um, we're going to save time for a little bit of Q&A at the end. So I'm going to pop in about 10 minutes before the session ends just to ask any of your questions to Natalie, any of your Burning Procreate questions. So if you have questions at any point during the workshop, just drop them in the Q&A tool and I will, I will surface them from there. The chat, as you can see, there are a lot of us here. Chat is moving fast. So the best way to make sure that we're able to address your question is to use that Q&A tool. And with that, I'm finally going to get us to the exciting part of the session, and that is mm -hmm. to welcome our instructor, Natalie Brown. Um, why don't you tell everyone a little bit about yourself, and then you can jump right into Procreate, and I'm going to go uh, head behind the scenes, and I'll see you all in chat. <laughs> Thank you so much, Jesse. So hi, everybody. Thank you guys for joining. I see that there's people from all over the world joining, which is pretty, it's like so cool because I saw somebody from Hungary and I'm like, oh, I went to Budapest like two years ago and I loved it. Um, So it's really cool to see people from everywhere. Um, So yeah, my name is Natalie Brown and I'm a hand lettering um, artist slash illustrator. And I've been doing this for about seven years now. You might see me on social media. Um, I My Instagram is Threology. And I mostly do a lot of like hand lettering and illustration. So today I wanted to dive into how to use Procreate as a digital sketchbook. So whatever I'm teaching today, feel free to take what you want and customize it to fit your own process. I'm going to show you guys how I do it in terms of illustration and hand lettering and how I do it with client work, things like that. So the majority of my work is mostly client work. So I do use my iPad as a sketchbook, um, which is kind of funny because I just got an iPad maybe around three years ago and I mostly did all my sketches on paper. So it's kind of crazy that now I'm just using it, using the digital sketchbook. So I already have Procreate opened, as you can see here, and we kind of see all of the files that I have here just to kind of briefly go over the Procreate interface. Right here is this main section where we're going to find all of our files. And of course, we can stack them to create individual files and organize it a little bit better. I've gone ahead and put all of my sketches at the top. And just to kind of quickly go over one, this is kind of how my um, sketches look as I'm kind of filtering, you know, flipping through the pages. This is kind of what you're going to see in my process. Um, it's very, very kind of a little bit like different depending on the project. Um, depending on my ideas, I will sketch differently depending. Yeah. So depending on the project, it's kind of defines how I'm going to be sketching. But for the most part, I do have a process for this and I am going to share with you guys how I do it. So I've gone ahead and 
you know, I'm going to share with you guys something that I've already kind of started. So I've started kind of creating some sketches for October. Um, sometimes I give out free wallpapers to my subscribers. So I was thinking of what, you know, some illustrations, some ideas to put together for a wallpaper, a desktop wallpaper. Um, so just to kind of briefly go over the interface right here, you will see um, we'll go back to our gallery. And at the top, we find all of our tools, our actions, adjustments that we can make to our design. Um, this is our selection tool. So this is where we're going to be able to make selections and then our direct selection tool. So this is going to grab whatever is on the layer that is selected at that moment. And then we have our brushes in this corner on the right side. So think of all of your drawing tools on the right side. And we have our smudge tool, our eraser, layers, and colors. And that's pretty much most of, pretty much the, the interface for Procreate. We can really dive into it, um, but we don't need to use all of these tools for sketching. So whenever I am, you know, planning out a sketch or some ideas, um, the main thing for me is to set up my canvas. So whenever I'm sketching, I am a, I'm huge on like having some guidelines and some 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 sort of like canvas setup. So when I go to um I'll go to actions and then I will go to let me find it drawing guide. This is where I will find um this is where I can set up my drawing guide for my canvas. And I'll usually click on edit drawing guide. So depending on the art that I'm going to create, whether it be lettering, illustration, maybe a pattern, especially for surface surface patterns, maybe you want to use the symmetry tool and you can go ahead and select you know, different guide options here. You can do a vertical symmetry, horizontal, quadrant, radial, depending on the project that you have or maybe some sketches that you wanna create. This is super, super important, setting up those guides because as a sketchbook, yes, maybe if they are gonna be rough designs, rough sketches, not final designs, you still wanna get you know, a really good idea of what you want to create for the final, final piece of art. So whenever I'm starting, I'm always starting off with some guides. So for me, I am mostly doing a 2D grid. Again, it just depends on the project. But as a lettering artist, I like to have that grid for very precise letters kind of sticking to those lines. So I will turn on my grid and make sure that my grid is set up so that I can utilize those lines to make sure some of my letters are straight. Um, and then again, lettering can, doesn't have to necessarily have super, super perfect lines. It can be look something like this, kind of a little bit messy. But then again, I still like to have those guides there. So first off, just love to set up a, you know, a guide for my designs. And then secondly, um, I, I can also use drawing assist. Oh, sorry. Let's see. I think let me slow down a second. It seems like the video got a little bit blurry. Okay, let me start again. Okay, so um, whenever I am, okay. Okay, awesome, okay. So, okay, jumping into after, you know, I set up my canvas, I also can use drawing assist. So drawing assist is another really cool thing to use as you know, as a little um, tool for your sketchbook. If you guys haven't used Drawing Assist, essentially we can turn on Drawing Assist by clicking on Actions and turning on Drawing Assist right here. And where is it at? Edit Drawing Guide. So right here we can turn on Assisted Drawing and I can click on Done. So now if I draw on my canvas, you can see that it's going to stick to that specific line. So if I draw here, it's going to be a straight line. It's sticking to those guides. So if you guys want to use the assisted drawing, I highly recommend it as well. Depending on what you're creating, we can stick to those guides. So this is really helpful whenever I'm sketching. So let's say I'm sketching a drawing for a door or something. I can use assisted drawing to do just that. So that's another tool that I use. So I start off with the canvas. I can turn on or off the assisted drawing. And then I go over to my brushes. So in terms of brushes that I'm using for sketching, I am huge on the sketching brushes here. So my top two favorite sketching brushes are the HP pencil and the 6B pencil. And sometimes a, sometimes a technical pencil, but HP and 6B, 6B pencils are my favorite pencils to use. And these are the ones I highly recommend because I feel like they feel more mostly like a pencil to me. And like I said, I got an iPad three years ago. So I really want to get that 
pencil sketchbook like feel that's really important to me because that's how I've always done my work is I've always started off sketching on paper and transferring it digitally so for me it's really important to really get that look um and then the other another another part to that is if you are somebody who likes to sketch maybe with an ink pen something like that um the inking brushes are really great too and the one I like to use is a technical pen so I like the technical pen for the inking brushes and for the sketching brushes I love the HB pencil and the 6B pencil so you can see here this is let me turn off my drawing assist if I click on my layer I can also turn turn off drawing assist this way as well so for the 6B pencil this is how you're seeing it's going to look and then for the HB pencil it's a little bit more um a little bit more confined. This one has a little bit more texture around it. And this one has a little bit less in my opinion. And then we have the inking brush. So the technical brush here looks something like this. We can increase the size on the right side and it'll look something like this. So these are great brushes that I recommend for sketching out designs. Another really important aspect of your brushes when it comes to sketching is kind of defining if you guys want to turn on streamline or not. So it totally depends on, you know, how I'm feeling or what kind of work I want to create at that moment. Um, maybe something I wanted to feel a little bit more rough around the edges, I will make sure Streamline is turned down. If I want it to look a little bit more clean, I'll make sure Streamline is turned all the way up. So what I'll do is, let's say I want to, I'll go to a sketching brush and I'll select the 6B pencil. I can tap on that 6B pencil and tap on stabilization. And this is where we can increase or decrease the streamline and stabilization here. So this is gonna make our pencil brush super, super smooth. So I can increase it, both of these really high. And you can see here, it's super, super smooth. The problem with that is you can't fill in or sketch right away. And that can be, that can be a little uh, of an annoyance at times. Um, so just depending on what you're trying to achieve, think about um, if you want streamline turned on or off. So for me in particular, I would, I'll normally for, you know, sometimes for letters, I will turn streamline about 50%. I don't like to go a hundred percent because it's just a little too much in my opinion. Um, but if I'm going to draw a letter, let's say a letter in cursive, um, I can turn on streamline and get those really nice curves here. So you can see here, I don't have to worry about having you know really jagged edges. The problem with the streamline though is again, if I wanna start filling in certain portions of my design, let's say I'm adding some, some width to my letters, I can't really fill it in fast enough. So I'll just go back, tap on my pencil and reduce the streamline to zero. And at this point I can go in and fill it in. And this is where it feels more of like a sketchbook where I'm just kind of scribbling in and sketching um, some of my designs like this. So I like using it like that. So in case, you know, you know, if you guys want, you can, you can use the, your brushes with a higher streamline for maybe the outside lines of your designs, or you can just kind of go in and just not use it at all. It's just going to give you, it's just going to give you a different type of look. And it, and for me, it doesn't really matter because I think of as, I think of the sketching phase as something that's going to be a little bit rough. Um, it doesn't have to be perfect. And I like it to kind of look like this. I want to kind of get my practice in and, and making it feel like a real pencil, in my opinion, because once we kind of go digital, once we start using a tablet, it's really easy to just turn Streamline on 100% and just let the just let the tablet do the work for us. But I think if you are an artist and maybe you like to work on paper and maybe you do live events, it's definitely important to kind of still work that muscle of creating, you know, designs kind of like a, as if you were doing it on paper. So for me, I like to keep the streamline down for the most part. Um, so again, turn on streamline, depending on your preference and depending on the project, depending on the look that you're going for. So for me, for the sketchbook, I love streamline sometimes and sometimes not. But again, but then again, you can see here, this is something that I did. The candle here has no streamline. And then this circle portion of the candle, I just drew an ellipse here and held down to create a perfect ellipse. And then I can edit my ellipse this way to fit my design better if, in case I wanted to do that. So again, we I set up my canvas. I can turn on or off drawing assist. I select my sketching brushes and then 
And then I, you know, select streamline or no streamline. And then the next part that I also focus in for my sketching for using Procreate as a sketchbook is my layers. So for me, I have a tendency whenever I am sketching is to put everything on the same layer. Um, that's just my preference because I'm not trying to go too crazy. Um, I'm just kind of sticking to one color. And that's the other thing when I am sketching, I recommend just sticking to black. And the reason why I say that is because sometimes when you start introducing colors so soon, it just kind of gets overwhelming and you kind of lose sight of your original idea for a design. And for me, it's really important just to really hone in on the design, focus on what I want to create, and then introduce color later on. So I always try to make sure that I design everything in black and white. And whenever I am sending client examples or client work to some of my clients, I make sure everything is in black and white. And it can also be very confusing for them as well um, once I start introducing color. So for me, black and white is the best way to start a sketch. And so once I've, you know, done that, I have my layers. And then another portion of, you know, having a sketchbook in Procreate is you can also create pages, which is really cool. So now that I have like my first page of like, you know, Halloween designs, illustrations, Halloween lettering, I can also just create a new page. So if you guys see here, I can turn on page assist and I click, click on new page. So now it's going to start feeling like a sketchbook. So literally I can turn the page and go to something, you know, create a new page. Maybe for this page, I want to focus on November wallpaper. So maybe I'll jump in here and write November. And you know, depending on how you want your sketchbooks to look, some people can get really into it, make it look a certain way, make things look super, super pretty. Again, it's totally up to your preference of how you want your sketchbook to look. Um, but for me, I'm the type of I'm the type of artist that will just kind of jump right in and start drawing. That's me. Um, and then some people might want to, you know, label the top page one, page two. You can definitely do that. So, which is really cool. You can use Procreate the pages feature in Procreate to really make Procreate feel like a sketchbook, which I really, really like. So this is what I do for a lot of my projects or ideas, since this is mostly con concerning the wallpaper designs for freebies for my subscribers. This is where I'll put all of those ideas in this file. So this file will be considered like wallpaper ideas. So definitely check out the page feature. Really, really cool. This was, I believe it was recently introduced, maybe I want to say a year ago. It's not like it didn't come with Procreate initially. So this is kind of a fairly new feature. Hey, Natalie, I wanted to pop in because first of all, everyone is loving this fact. Oh, okay, awesome. It's blowing our minds. Um, <laughs> but it was very quick for us to see it for something that blew our minds so much. So oh, okay, okay. Just reshow um, how to get multiple pages. And also, if you could let us know your canvas size. We had a few questions awesome. about that. Okay, so to add a new, so whenever you are, whenever you want to add pages to your Procreate file, all you have to do is click on the actions icon up here, which is this little wrench, and then you're just going to drop down and turn on page assist. So just toggle this on and off so I can toggle it on and then we can add a new page by clicking on tapping on new page here and we can add as many pages as you want. So we can go through all of these pages. Obviously, these are blank, but if I were to kind of draw on each one, you can kind of see that I, it's like I'm flipping through my sketchbook. Obviously, those are just little <laughs> circles, um, but you can easily create a fun little sketchbook that way in Procreate. Um, and then let's see, let me go back to my first page here. And if you want to just just to let you guys know, in case you want to delete a page, just hold down on the page here. Oops. Or just tap on the page, sorry. And then you can click on delete. So I'll tap delete. You can also duplicate a page if you want to. Um, but for the in this case, I don't really need all those pages. I just wanted to show you guys how each of them look. And then in terms of canvas size, um, so we can see here, uh, if I go to canvas information, so again, you can click on the little wrench. If you are ever concerned as to am I drawing in the right canvas on the right canvas size, especially if you're, you know, creating work for um, 
a client and you need a specific canvas size, you just have to click on the wrench and go all the way to the bottom and click on canvas information. And this is where you can click on dimensions. And this is going to give you the size of your canvas. I have the um, just 2048 by 2732. This is the size of the iPad screen. So I'm using the largest um, size um, in terms of drawing. So remember, whenever you are drawing in Procreate, it's a raster image. So you have to... Um, if your designs are going to go straight to product, um, let's say on a mug, that's going to be how big they are. You can't really scale them really, really big because it's not a vector image. It's using, um, it's a raster image. So it will get pixelated if you don't pick the correct size. So just make sure you are picking the correct size when you are designing. So again, so the canvas size is, if I go to dimensions, it's 2048 by 2732. So it's just the entire size, the entire size of the um iPad screen. So that's just the largest size for the iPad. And then also just to kind of let you know, it just depends also on the iPad that you're using. So I have the 12.9 inch iPad Pro. So if you have a smaller iPad, your um your your largest canvas size is going to be much smaller than mine. So just depending on the iPad that you're using. So if you're using an iPad mini, your canvas size is going to be smaller. Okay. So jumping right back into the sketchbook. So now that we kind of have our pages, I've shown you guys, you know, the tools that I use for sketching, um, the brushes. Um, I wanted to go into kind of layer management. Um, again, whenever we are going to see our layers here, they, you're going to see the layers for all of your pages. So now that I've added pages, we can see all of those um, layers or all of those pages layers on my layer side, if that makes sense. I know that's kind of like a tongue tie. So essentially, even if I'm on the first page, I'm going to see the layers for my other pages as well. So that can be a little bit confusing. So just be sure to label them if you have trouble, you know, you know, finding your artwork or finding specific designs. I'm not the best at organization, but I do try to label my artwork just in case because I know that I can, you know, lose some things whenever I'm designing and maybe I'm like, where did I put the November artwork? Um, I just, you can label it that way. So I can go in and oops, label this layer. I'll click on the layer. So let me show you guys just in case. Tap on the layer and click on rename and then tap here. And then I'll put October sketches. And then for the second page, same thing. I can click on rename and click or tap November sketches. And there we go. So now if I click on the layers, it's also going to, you know, switch the page for me. So it's really important to organize your layers if you are going to be using the page assist tool in Procreate, because if you're designing, if you're adding a ton of layers, it's going to get kind of crazy on the right side. So just be sure to label those um, layers just to keep organized. Um, and then another thing I wanted to go over, you know, besides sketching and setting, setting up our canvas and using the page assist in Procreate, um, I also like to share, you know, selections, you know, using the selection tool to make precise selections in terms of organizing your sketch. So yes, maybe I kind of went a little crazy here. I, you know, drew a bunch of different illustrations. But the cool thing about having a digital, digital sketchbook is I can actually move things around and organize it in a way that I feel, you know, works for me. Again, take what you want, you know, customize it to fit your own process for design and illustration. But the cool thing about um, the selection tool is I can move things around my canvas. If we were drawing in an actual sketchbook um, without the tablet, we can't go in there and move things around. The cool thing about having a digital sketchbook is we can actually go in and move things around. So I can make select the selection tool here. And there are four different ways we can make a selection. We can do an automatic selection. And automatic, essentially, if I tap on an area here, let me just make sure I have my layer selected. And let me go back. And let me just click on the layer here. So I'll click on this right here. And you can see here it's selecting it. And it's kind of hard to see because it is in black and white, um, but it's doing an automatic selection. So the iPad, so Procreate is actually trying to guess at what you're selection, selecting. So 
by click selecting automatic, it's you're telling the iPad to, or telling Procreate to guess at what I'm trying to select here. Um, and if I continue to tap on areas in my design, you can see here it's adding more. Um, then it's kind of adding more depending on the automatic selection. So automatic selection is just kind of guessing at what you're selecting. I don't necessarily like automatic selection just because if we are using sketching brushes, it's not going to grab everything just because there are so many textures here that it's hard for Procreate to select precisely that selection. So I recommend actually selecting the freehand. Oops, we don't want that. I recommend selecting freehand, rectangle, or ellipse. So freehand is pretty straightforward. It's just you freely drawing your selection. So now that I've made that selection, I can click on the direct selection tool. Let me zoom out here and I can move my little cauldron off to the side. And then let's say I go back to my selection tools and I can also use the rectangle selection tool. So I can go up here and make a rectangular selection of the word costume. And I can tap on the direct selection tool here and I can move it to wherever I want it to go. So maybe I wanna move it a little bit to the right, maybe bring it down. I can bring it down here if I want to, to organize it a little bit more. And going back to the selection tool, I can also make an ellipse selection. So let's say I wanna select this eyeball over here. I can make an ellipse selection like this. And then I can go ahead, tap on the direct selection tool. And now I can move that eyeball to where I want it to go. Maybe I want it to go up here. Um, so that's the cool thing about using the selection tool is you can organize your sketches however you see fit, um, especially if you feel like this looks kind of all over the place. I want my illustration, illustrations on the upper left-hand corner. Maybe I want some lettering styles on the right-hand corner. Maybe I want some chicken scratch on the upper right-hand corner. You can organize it however you see fit. So again, all I'll do is I'll just make some selections here and with the direct, with direct selection tool, I'll just move them around just to kind of organize my page a little bit better. And let's make sure we're not expanding that. And I'm just moving everything around just to show you guys how we can make it look. Maybe this, we want it to be, I kind of want October to be at the top, but this pumpkin spice might be in the way. So I'll just move it over here. And then with the free hand, I'm gonna grab this little pumpkin on this corner and then move it underneath here. And just kind of organizing this however I want, um, just so it looks nicer. So if you're somebody who's like, I really want this to look a very specific way, um, this is kind of a great tool using the selection tool to organize everything for yourself. So I'll put this eyeball over here. Oops, got to zoom in here. We put it right here. So again, I'm kind of organizing it however I want. So again, feel free to go ahead and organize, use the selection tool to organize your page however you want. So that is another cool thing about having a digital sketchbook is you don't have to have it look initially how you've done it. So once you've sketched it, it's not you know set in place. You can actually go in and adjust it, move things around, maybe make it look nicer, just depending on your process, like I said. So feel free to take what you want, um, but that's another cool thing, using the selection tool to organize your page. Um, and then also transformation. So another thing I like to point out whenever you are doing sketches is transforming your designs, transforming your selections. So let's say, I want to select costume and maybe I want to make some adjustments to costume. I can go to my selection tool and I'm going to select rect rectangle here and I'm just going to select costume and I'm actually going to click copy and paste. Um, so because I have another page, it's copying and pasting it on a new layer, which is creating a new page. So we don't want that to happen. I want that to be on the same page as the other one. So I'm going to bring this down a little bit. And you can see here it's automatically created a new page. I'm actually going to tap on it and click on merge down. 
So now it's being placed on the first page. So keep in mind, if you are going to do copy and paste, it's going to put it on a brand new page. So the pages feature in Procreate can be a little finicky. So just be sure to keep all of your pages on their own se separate layer. So jumping back into transforming your selections, I can go in and select costume here. So now that I've made this selection, I can tap on the direct selection tool and I can make I can transform that selection. So we can do a uniform distort warp or freeform um, transformation to this lettering or to this area of my sketchbook. So if I click on freeform, I can, you know, change the way it looks this way transform it that way. I can, uniform is just going to scale it up and down uniform in a uniform way. And then distort, we can distort our design this way as well. Warp, obviously we can move it around like this, playing around with these little anchor points here to change the look of our design. And I can click on undo, double tap to undo any of my work here. So another cool thing is if you are sketching and the cool thing about, you know, using Procreate as a digital sketchbook is, yeah, you can, you know, sketch something out, but you can also use the transform tools to transform some of those sketches. And you can get creative with it because, for example, here I have it kind of, you know, slanted to the left side and, you know, maybe designing that by hand at first is a little bit hard because like you have to make sure everything's perfectly lined at this angle um and then also distorting it or warping it uh, maybe i want to make it look like it's kind of going off into the distance getting wider and that kind of get lets me get a little bit more creative with my sketches which i think is really really fun um especially because like you can come up with new ideas this is what I always, you know, teach in a lot of my workshops is use all the tools in whatever app you're using because it can really help you get creative with some of your ideas. So the transform tools are really great to transform some of your sketches. So of course the sketching phase is going to look something like all kinds of, you know, designs on your page. Maybe they all look very similar, but, you know, use the transform tool, use the other tools in the app to kind of get creative, experiment with different things. Um, so in terms of like, if you are drawing on a, on actual paper, you can't really do that as much. So there are a lot of benefits to sketching digitally. There's just so many options of how you can like play with your designs and expand on your designs and just, you know, use your imagination to come up with new ideas. So that, that's kind of go, going over the transform tool. And then another thing I wanted to go over is, you know, time saving tips in terms of you know, designing and procreate. Um, you guys might already know some of these, but just to be sure that you guys, um, just to be sure that you guys do have these in your tool belt, um, double tap is to undo. So if I'm double tapping here, I can undo. If I hold down two fingers, it'll double tap or it'll, it'll undo rapidly. So it'll start undoing a lot of every, everything that I've done really, really fast. Um, so just be careful not to hold down. If you do accidentally do that, so let's say I hold down, you see it's already doing that. If you do happen to do that, you can do three fingers and hold down to redo all the way to the beginning. So just in case you accidentally undo a bunch of your work and you're like, oh my God, I was holding down two fingers uh, on the screen, just hold down three fingers and that'll bring up everything if you just hold on, hold down all the way to the end. Um, and then I also recommend um, going over your gestures in Procreate. So the gestures, let me find the gestures here. I always forget where they are. Oh, preferences. Yes. Yeah. So under preferences, we can go to gesture controls. And this is where you're going to find all the settings for different gestures that you can use in Procreate. So obviously, if I go to erase, um, or what where was it? Um, copy and paste. Yes, yeah, so erase, we can do a finger will always erase. So I can say, whenever I touch the screen, my finger can erase. Um, and then also like copy and paste, I have the three finger swipe down. So if I click on done here, I love this um, gesture here. If I do a three finger swipe, the copy and paste panel will pop up. So I can copy, copy all, duplicate, cop, cop, cut and paste, sorry, and paste. So these are different gestures that you can set up on your iPad. So I, I highly recommend, you know, going through all the gestures here under preferences and playing around with what works for you. There are so many, um, for example, scrub, 
I have scrub selected here or toggled on. And that's essentially saying if I scrub back and forth with three fingers, it's going to clear the entire layer. So let's say I go to, let's go to this November layer because I don't want to accidentally delete all of this, this on the first page. If I do a three finger, one, two, three, let's do that again. Oops. Oh, it's not, there you go. It was a little finicky, but essentially it's going to delete everything on that layer. Um, and then you can click on undo to bring it back just in case. So go back to the first page. And again, I highly recommend going into your gesture controls and just, you know, playing around with everything on here to customize it to fit your own process. Because we all have a different process. I know I'm different. I'm sure you're different in terms of your sketching process. You know, set up your gesture controls to fit your process. It's going to help you to be more efficient as an artist. And it's really going to just make things way easier whenever you are sketching in your Procreate Digital, your digital sketchbook and Procreate. Um, and then another thing I wanted to go over is clipping masks. So if you are, you know, coming up with ideas for, let's say you want to add textures to some of your designs, um, you can add clipping masks to kind of give yourself some ideas for how you want to do color. Um, so if I want to add a clipping mask, we can we can do a regular mask or we can add a clipping mask. Um, so a clipping mask here is I can click on a new layer here and then I can tap on it and click on clipping mask. And this is going to allow me to add like certain designs within this layer. So essentially what you're doing is you're saying, whatever I draw on here, I want it to go on this artwork down here. So on this, everything here on this October sketches layer. So I'll grab my brush and let's just grab a gray color. Cause again, I want to skip to, I want to stick to not skip to, <laughs> I want to stick to black and white. I don't want to introduce color. I can go in here and let's say, Hey, I want for this October to maybe have a shading that goes from light at the bottom and I want it to go upwards just like that even for some of your designs let's say I have my cauldron down here hey I want to add some shine on the left side of it I'm just using a clipping mask here to give myself you know more um, freedom as to how I'm sketching my designs and getting a little bit more creative not that it just has to be clearly in black and white but I can use clipping masks to add a little bit more detail uh, maybe I want to add some lines on the side Maybe I want to add some shine to this letter here, taboo. So clipping masks are great. If you are going to use a mask, um, it's just going to change the light and the darkness on the page. I'm going to undo this clipping mask here. And I'm going to just go over the different types of masks just to make sure. Um, let's just jump into here. If we click on alpha lock here, alpha lock is saying, lock everything on this page and whatever I draw on it's going to go directly on these elements so let's say I have my pencil here and if I draw here you can see here it's only going on that layer the problem with alpha lock is you can't go back and kind of erase it and adjust it it's already locked into that illustration if that makes sense so this gray is locked into that illustration if I click on undo I'll click on, I'll turn off alpha lock. I'll click on a new layer and click on clippy mask. Just going back to show you guys. If I do the same thing, same thing here, it's not locked into place. The cool thing is I can always, you know, go back to that layer and adjust it. I can go back and say, oh, I actually want to get rid of it on the B. Um, I want to, I want to, I don't want it here. So the cool thing about clippy masks is they are editable. You can go back and make adjustments. You can delete them if you want to. Um, just keep that in mind. Alpha lock, it's set in stone. It's done. It's going to be, it's going to stick on there. So unless you click on undo, like that's how your artwork is going to look. Um, so then I can go ahead and delete that. And then when we go to mask, so a mask is something different. Um, so a mask is something different. So when we click on mask, let me see mask here, we can so the way masks work is essentially is you're creating a window. I like to say it's like a window to your artwork. Um, we can go into our brush panel here and the brush, the colors that you can use for masks are black, white, or gray. So if I click on black here, it's going to create a window here. So I'm drawing here. I'm not using the eraser. It's literally creating a window to whatever is underneath that design. Um, so let's say I click on white it's gonna close that window. 
And then if I click on gray, it's going to be somewhere in the middle. So you can kind of see how that works um, with masks. It's like a window um, in case you guys want to try it that way. So there's those are the three different ways you can you can kind of change up your sketches. So remember, we have a clipping mask that you can edit and it's not locked in. You have an alpha lock. So alpha lock is going to make sure whatever you sketch on there, it's going to be stuck all together on that one layer. And then we have masks. So masks are going to be able to create windows for your artwork, which are really fun in case you guys want to add like dimension to your artwork and maybe put like things behind beneath each other and layer things. Um, so that is, those are clipping masks and masks. And then lastly, I wanted to go over, you know, adding depth and dimension to some of your artwork. Um, so in terms of like layers, you can make opacity adjustments. So in case you didn't know, um, you can, let's say I want to create a, let's do a clipping mask here. And I'm going to grab the Bonobo chalk brush here. And I'm going to go down to my cauldron. And I'm going to add some texture here. And if this was in color, um, you can kind of see a little bit more as to how this works. But if you tap on this little end here, this is where you're going to see your opacity adjustments. So there's all type of adjustments you can add to that layer. So I can click on darken. Oops, let me go back. Darken, color, burn, linear, burn, darken, color, normal, light, screen, dodge. There's so many here and you can't really see them as much because it is black and white, but it is going to change the way it looks on your design. So again, this is something that you can play around with, especially if you want to add a little bit more color. Um, the, the opacity, you can adjust it. You can increase or decrease the opacity, but these are opacity, these are opacity adjustments in case you want to play around with the design a little bit more. So this is going to give you more options for depth and dimension. Um, and then going back into my design here, I'm going to go ahead and delete that clipping mask. Um, we also can use shadows and highlights. So again, um, I like to use black and white. If I am going to, you know, add some dimension to my sketches, I always recommend, you know, you know, using the color white to make things shine. So if I'm going down to the word boo down here, I can go back to my sketching brush and I can add some shine here. So just using the color white to make it shiny. And then we can also use the color gray to maybe add some shadow here. So maybe I want it to look like it's going off in the distance, something like this. And I can use the smudge tool to kind of smudge it out. And then I can use my eraser to make sure it's like a clean line here. And you can see here, I'm adding a little bit more dimension by adding some shading. So with the shadow and highlights, you know, use the grays to add maybe some shadows, blacks to add a little bit more dimension, maybe 3D portions of your designs, and then white to add some shine. Um, so that's really cool to add dimension and depth to your designs. And then I also wanted to go over textures and brushes. So if you guys want to really go into like really getting an idea as to how you want your final design to work, you can really use texture brushes in Procreate. So if I go into Procreate, or not Procreate, if I go into the brush panel here, obviously Procreate comes with a ton of brushes. You can also purchase brushes online from other artists. Um, but I like to use the texture brushes down here. So these are fun texture brushes that you can use for your designs as well. And like I said, I would like to create a clipping mask here. So I'm gonna create a clipping mask here and I'm gonna use the color white so we can really see how this is looking. And I'll go to my October design here and I can use the sketching brush to, or not the sketching brush, the texture brushes to add textures to some of my designs. So you can see here, I'm adding some texture. Um, there's so many to choose from. Maybe you want to use this one up here, look something like this. So just different ways to really bring your sketches to life is to use some of the texture brushes here. Um, another brush that I really like to use for texture is the Bonobo chalk brush, which is in the sketching panel all the way at the bottom. If you don't see that one, you can actually go to Procreate's website and they have a page where you can access some of their old brushes. Whenever they update um, Procreate, sometimes they get rid of old brushes, but they do make them available on their website in case you're like, oh, I really like that brush they released in, let's say version 3.0. 
you can always go back to those brushes and download them from the website and put them back on Procreate. So just in case you don't have certain brushes, you can go ahead and do that. And so the brush that I like to use for texture is Bonobo Chalk. I love this brush for texture. And again, I don't need color to show what it would look like, but it looks something like this. It's kind of like a half tone kind of, you know, brush, but it does really give that really texturized look that I really, really like. I can add it down here as well, maybe to this letters. Maybe I can add it to some of my pumpkins here just to give it a little bit more dimension. Um, so that is the, the Bonobo chalk brush that I really, really like to use. Um, and then again, you can always continue to find different brushes. A lot of these are brushes that I've purchased or brushes that I've created myself. Um, uh, there's also noise. I can add noise to my designs here. Uh, maybe add some noise here to the P. You can see here, you can add a little bit of noise. Um, another cool thing we can do is besides using brushes to add texture, we can also use some of the tools in Procreate. So if I go to adjustments here, we can get a little bit more um, detailed as to how we want our sketches to look. So I'll go down here and select my original layer and I'll go to the adjustments panel. And this is where we can find, you know, more options as to how we can really bring our sketches to life. Um, my favorite thing to do in adjustments is to use the half tone. Um, and if I just select screen print, I can drag to the right and the left to change the way my sketches look. So another cool thing about Procreate as a digital sketchbook is I don't necessarily have to have it look like a text, a pencil drawing on paper. I can change the way it looks. So if I drag to the left, I can decrease the amount of screen print texture. And if I drag to the right, you can see I'm really, really making that nice and bold. Um, but I like to add just a tiny bit. Um, you can also do newspaper just to see how that looks and full color. So full color, you're not going to be able to see as much. Once you actually add color to your designs, you're going to be able to see how that looks. It's going to have red, I believe red, yellow, and blue or red, yellow, and green. Um, and it's going to show you, you know, these colors kind of overlapping, but another way to add texture to your designs to say, okay, I really want this sketch to have a lot of texture to it. I want it to get, have this feel to it. You can do it that way as well. So I like to use the screen print um, just to give it a little bit more texture and that's how it would look. I'll click on undo until it's back to normal. And again, you can go back to your adjustments and you can even add noise. So a noise is another cool, you know, texture or adjustment that you can add to your layers. So if I click on clouds, um, I could drag to the right. You can see here it's adding some texture here, some clouds texture as I call it. You can do billows. Again, dragging left to right. Bridges, again, dragging left to right. And you can adjust um, the settings down here. So if I go back down to clouds, I can increase or decrease the scale for how that looks. And again, just playing around with how this looks, feel free to mess around with these settings because, you know, for me, whenever I started getting into Procreate, I just was experimenting with everything to see how everything worked, um, just to kind of get a, you know, a good idea for how Procreate works. Um, just play around with it, experiment. Don't be afraid to test things out. You can always reset things or undo things. Um, but that's what I always recommend, go in and jump in and play around with it. Um, and then I can click on undo here. And again, feel free to go through all of these different adjustments that you can make to your designs. Um, and then I believe, you know, you can go through all of these and I recommend going in and playing around with it. And lastly, before I, uh, before I let Jesse take over is if you guys do have any questions, I know I saw some people say any intro um, tips for Procreate, you can actually go to, let me see, help in Procreate and click on the Procreate handbook. If you click on the Procreate Handbook here, um, it'll literally take you to everything that's involved, included in Procreate. You can say, how do you use the, how do you paint, smudge, and erase? It'll literally give you all of the information on that. So um, if you guys want, feel free to use that Procreate Handbook in case you guys have any questions.
So I'll let you take over. Just you know, I was just making sure I covered everything. No, you're doing amazing, and I don't want to take over per se. I want to make sure that <laughs> these questions answered because um, this was awesome. I mean, you're awesome. sharing so many tips. We're seeing beginners and more experienced folks in the chat are learning something, which is always fun to see. Um, <laughs> obviously, if, if you're looking at the chat, you can see a lot of praise oh, awesome. <laughs> coming from our attendees yeah, right now. Glad- I'm glad you guys are enjoying it or enjoyed it. <laughs> um, but we also have a bunch of questions in ch- uh, in the Q and A. So with our okay. last um, five to eight minutes, I'm gonna try and get us through some of those. Okay. So I think the most popular one was that there is some confusion and curiosity around pages versus okay. um, Got it. So if you could kind of give give us the differentiation between pages versus layers and then I might have some follow-up questions. <laughs> Great. Okay, so I know that is definitely confusing. Um like I said, the pages feature is kind of a new thing in Procreate. They wanted to kind of enable you guys to upload PDFs. So pages and actually allows you to import PDFs into Procreate. So before let's say if you downloaded a PDF file from a artist or somebody that, you know, you downloaded like a lettering workbook or some sort of coloring workbook, um, you can actually import it into Procreate and start coloring on those pages. So that's why they, I believe they introduced it. Um, But it's a little bit confusing. So pages, essentially each page is a different layer. So um, this first page is this layer here. And this second page here is the November layer. So you can see here, whenever you have a new page, it's going to transition it's also going to create a new layer. Um, and you're going to, if you draw on that layer, so if I click on new page here, and then it's going to create page three. So you can go in and change the labeling of the layer. So I like to just say October sketches, November sketches, but if it's easier for you, you can just say page one. So I can go in and tap here and go page one. Oops. I'll click on rename. It's automatically going to say, okay, I can't do this. <laughs> it's automatically going to rename it as the page that it's on. So if I click on page, if I type page one, it's going to be page one. Page three is going to go to page three. If I click on a new page, it's automatically creating a new layer and that's page four. So these are going to be, these work together. So layers and pages are essentially the same thing. So just keep in mind that whatever page you are on, it's going to create a new layer for that. So like I said, all of your sketches for that page have to be on that layer. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. (laughs) It does. And I think it's one of those things too, where, especially since this is a new feature, like once we all start playing more, it'll make more sense. I feel like layers in general, at least for me, it's like that I need, and yeah, (laughs) I need to do it before I really understand it. Yeah. (laughs) Um, and so based on your explanation, it sounds like we're limited on the number of pages we can add similarly to how we're limited to the number of layers we can add depending on our iPad and our memory. Yes, yes. Awesome. Um, all right. Uh, quick one. Do you have any film or protector or anything over your screen that gives it the feeling more like paper or are you just drawing right on your iPad screen? I am using the paper like screen protector. That is the one I use. It feels like paper. Um, I know there's a bunch out there, but that's the one I've used most of the time. And it definitely does feel like paper. I highly recommend it, especially when I first got an iPad. It was just way too like slippery for me. Um, and that the paper like screen protector does a really good job of making it feel like actual paper. Awesome. Mm-hmm. Um that's one of those tools that I've always wanted to try and I just haven't. And I feel like it's <laughs> yeah. my iPad so much more. Yeah, it's definitely a game changer. <laughs> yeah. Um. So you showed something that I know is something very fun in Procreate, but it happens very quickly. Can you show again how you sketch an oval and how you hold to make it a perfect Oh, yeah. Shape? A perfect shape. Yes. Yeah, so if I go to my brush, let me go grab a inking brush here so we can release how this looks. I'll grab the technical pen brush and I'll zoom in here. If I want to create a perfect circle or oval, I'll just create draw a circle and hold down. And if I hold down and move my brush, I can increase or decrease the size of, of that oval. But I can also click on this little module that pops up here 
and I can click on it or tap on it and I can say, okay, I don't want it to be an ellipse. I want it to be a circle and it'll create a perfect circle. You can also select the points here and adjust it if you want to. Maybe you want to make it more of an oval, depending on how you want it to look. Again, you can just click between these two and make that perfect shape. The same thing is with a different shape. I can create a square and hold down and it'll create a perfect, well, semi-perfect square. I can click on this and start editing it as well, just to kind of maybe make it more symmetrical here. Um, so depending on the shape, um, you can create different um, perfectly um, symmetrical shapes. I can create a triangle, same thing. It's gonna create those very straight lines. Awesome. <laughs> um, and then I'm gonna take a question really quick. So I see a couple questions around what settings should we set our designs to before printing on fabric? So mm -hmm. I can answer for Spoonflower specifically, um, and I'm gonna share a link in chat right now that uh, y'all can open up so you have access to it after the Zoom ends. And this is all of our information in the Help Center about uploading and designing. So you can reference the specs there. But at Spoonflower, we use 150 DPI and we use RGB. Um, so when you're creating your file, it still is a good idea to create files that are 300 DPI. So that way you have a larger format. But for uploading to Spoonflower, it just has to be 150 in an RGB color mode. Um, let's look, we've got a lot of questions, so I'm just filtering <laughs> through in our last minute here. I think we have, um, time for one more before I close us out. Um, let's see. How about, you guys asked some great mm -hmm. questions, so I want to make sure, <laughs> um, Oh, you know, one that turned a few people up, and I know this happens to me sometimes too. Can mm. you show again when you were moving an object and it kept mm -hmm. wanting to transform it or to enlarge uh -huh. it? And it yes. You move? Is there a special place we need to make sure that our Apple Pencil is dragging from to make sure we're actually moving an object the way we want yeah. to? Yeah. So that's a really good question. That's something I, I really would love Procreate to kind of like create an update for because that is a super annoyance. Let's say I draw something here. Um, and if I grab the selection tool um, and I make a selection here and I want to move it and let's do uniform here, um, sometimes it won't grab it. This is easily being grabbed here, but let's say I want to grab maybe something with a little bit more texture on it. Um, let's say I want to grab this one here. And it's not going to do it here, but. Yeah, so now that you see that it's doing that, it's, it starts to make it bigger once I start to grab it. Sometimes it increases the size. Um, when you're grabbing something and it's really small, it's you're going to be more likely to play with the size of it. Um, that's just how it is. If you actually zoom in and then grab it, you can move it around better. Um, but if it's really small and you're trying to reach it, let me just make it super small and I'm just trying to grab it here, you see it's doing that. Um, it's just because it's really tiny. Um, you're going to have to just zoom in. Let me make it really small. You're going to have to zoom in here. Oops. Zoom in here and move it around. That's just kind of the workaround. There's not really like some special thing you can do. Um, you have to really make sure you're grabbing the artwork. It's just really tiny. Uh, the cool thing about, uh, I always like to mention this, if you ever try Adobe Fresco, they actually have an option for you to tap on the screen to just, um, there's a selection where you can actually just tap a por portion of the screen and just move that selection around. You don't necessarily have to directly put your pencil on the actual selection. So that's something I wish Procreate would bring to um, to Procreate, just kind of update that feature of the select of selecting yeah, <laughs> it's one of those. <laughs> yeah, that's all up. Yeah. Um, well, Natalie, thank you so much. This was amazing. I'm feeling reinvigorated and inspired to start using Procreate <laughs> as a digital sketchbook. I also, I shared to my Instagram story during this that I just feel like I need to start a spooky sketchbook specifically oh. <laughs> Procreate. You have me in the seasonal mood also. Yeah. 
Um, I shared some links in the chat. If y'all just scroll up a tiny bit, you'll see two important things. One is that if you took a picture today or you have a picture of what you're working on in your iPad, share that to your to Instagram using hashtag Surface Design Symposium and make sure to tag Spoonflower, Craft Industry Alliance, and Natalie at Threeology. We're going to be sharing some of those to our Spoonflower stories tomorrow, and we just want to make sure that we're keeping up with all the cool things you all are making. And then lastly, um, we are collecting feedback about this event because we want to just keep creating events that are educating you on the things that you want to learn. So I'm going to drop that survey link in chat again. Just make sure you open it before I close out this Zoom and submit that so we can um, make even better monthly webinars and symposiums for you. Um, so Natalie, thank you again so much. This was incredible. I really appreciate you. you being here and sharing your knowledge with us. <laughs> thank you. Thank you guys so much. And if you guys have any questions, I know I kind of went kind of fast because I wanted to make sure I covered everything, but you guys can always reach me on DMs on Instagram or email me. Um, and then it's Threeology on Instagram, or you could just email me, whatever's easier. Awesome. And so that's at Threeology on Instagram yeah. is for Natalie. Um, I hope that some of you are going to be joining us in just a few minutes really for our keynote with Mabel Tan. So I hope to see you there. And if not, maybe I'll catch you at a few sessions tomorrow. Thanks everyone so much. Have a great one. Bye. Bye.